For this particular uh, episode, because um, he is busy with Valentine's Day, and he is the Cupid sending, spreading love to everybody right now. So, um, um, although we will miss him uh, in this episode, he will join us uh, our next one um, in the peony of the month, February, and. Uh, what is the um, peony of the month, February? Okay, uh, well, uh, peony of the month for the, the month of February is a lovely, uh, lovely peony called Lovely Rose. It's, um, it's a wonderful double cut. That is lovely. Um, so uh, I actually used um, Lovely Rose uh, as a reference to create uh, a field of peonies, which is shown uh, in the background of my Zoom court right now. Uh, it is a painting that I'm working on uh, for Chelsea Flower Show this year. One thing I was thinking actually uh, was uh, how interesting that we got together because of peonies. And um, uh, I thought it would be good to share our stories, our journey with peonies uh, this, uh, uh, this month. So uh, for me, uh, it, it's kind of unexpected uh, encounter with, with peonies. Obviously, uh, peony is the national flower of, uh, of China, but I had never actually seen uh, a real peony uh, when I was uh, in China. Um, but you see peony graphics everywhere. And this week is the Chinese New Year. And I don't know if you have seen uh, the Chinese New Year cards uh, or any celebrations that uh, you can see, you can find the peonies everywhere. And to me before, um, those graphics kind of represents um, the traditional uh, side of or the traditional association of peonies with prosperity and also uh, uh, China and you see them in gold in, in uh, uh, red and in yellow kind of a cliche in a way and and because uh, uh, buying cut flowers was never a tradition or uh, uh, when I was little uh, in China it was a luxury and I, I never went out to buy peonies or buy cut flowers let alone peonies and it wasn't uh, it's more of showing peonies in gardens so Billy you know uh, that there are many uh, uh, fields uh, or gardens of peonies in central uh, China where uh, they claim where the, the peonies are originally from. So I never sort of associate uh, or, or love peonies then until um, it was a spring uh, in the UK and I bought some cut flowers when I saw the pink, big, complicated uh, flowers in the shop. I thought, wow, they are just gorgeous they're chic they're romantic they're big um so uh, i bought them and i didn't know the word peony i got them i looked them up and i just then realized they are peonies um and because in a way i discovered them my my first association was it's a very romantic uh flower and obviously i took thousands of photos of that bunch I bought and it was a actually it was a Chinese New Year probably 10 or more than 10 years ago I took a, a week off from work and uh, I was alone I wasn't with my family uh, and I thought 
I need to do something to kind of ceremonial uh, to celebrate the Chinese New Year. So I decided to paint uh, the peonies, the, the bunch that I took photo of. Um, and from the artist uh, perspective, um, the, the shape of the, the peonies, it's a traditional double. Um, it's quite complicated um, and it has so, so many petals. So for me as an artist, I want to tackle that challenge. I want to see if I can manage to separate those petals in my, in my art and really represent uh, or recreate that gorgeous flower. And that's how I spend my Chinese New Year, recreating the peonies, um, not in the traditional way, um, but also uh, sort of celebrating uh, Chinese New Year. Um, so that was the creation of Chilled Passion that, um, uh, that I, I, I did. And uh, I, I love the result um, because I tackled the challenge, but also because um, it's not too traditional that you see from Chinese restaurants or a Chinese New Year's card, um, because I, I, I really want to inject the, the romance that I first uh, associate, uh, the peony, uh, the chic and the romance that I associate uh, with peony when I first saw it in the shop. So. So that was my journey um, and ever since I'm the peony girl and I can't stop painting them. Uh, and I bought peonies from peony plants and are growing them in my garden. So, so that was my story. Um, how did you get into peonies, uh, Heath? It's funny listening to your journey, how peonies seem to have a way of drawing you back in again when you don't realise it. Um, and my journey started a little bit like that. I mean, years ago when I was a kid, and it's a long time ago now, uh, on the farm in New Zealand. And I remember my parents were given a, a peony by a friend or a neighbour. And I always remember as a kid, not really knowing what they were, but I remember that there was a big sort of you know, this is, this is an expensive plant. This is a plant to be treasured. And so we always knew where it was in the garden. I think they probably did everything wrong. They put it in the, under some trees and all the rest of it. But this, this peony still flowered. And it was the traditional peony that everybody knows. It was a red and it was a double and it was the one that everybody sees. So anyway, years went by. And funnily enough, after we sold the farm, before I moved to the UK, just through the way life happened, I ended up working for a commercial peony grower in New Zealand, um, harvesting between 300 and 500,000 stems for uh, export. And so after a season of doing that and getting to know them quite well, some other friends decided they went into peony production as well. And then when I moved to the UK, I thought, okay, that's my, my bit of peony life out of the way. And then, uh, as it turned out, I ended up starting to work for Billy while I was studying and <laughs> realising that Billy was the king of peonies in the UK. <laughs> and so we, here we are again with peonies and I just can't get away from them. And to be honest, I am quite happy to still be involved with them. So, Oh, that's lovely. As you said, like it has its way to draw you back uh, in with them. It's amazing with peonies how, and you notice that at the shows and even with customers coming into to Binny Plants, everybody seems to have a memory of them. Uh, mm. Whether consciously or subconsciously, you hear people talking about peonies and it's always the, my grandmother had it, my grandparents had it, my sister had one, I gave one to my auntie for a, for a birthday present, my niece had it in her wedding bouquet. It, it's, it just occurs everywhere. That's nice, yeah. Yeah. So Billy, are you still there, Billy? I'm back, I'm back again. You? I could hear your, both your lovely stories, um, which was great because uh, I think Heath's experience, first experience of peonies is very similar to mine. And, you know, you see these plants when you're a tiny child. And if you imagine when you're a really small child, 
what size a peony actually is. It's, it's huge. It's almost the same size as your head. And um, uh, I became fascinated by them when I was about six or seven. And um, we had one in the garden, which my mum hated, because every time it flowered, it was the typical old-fashioned double red um, uh, peony officinalis rubra plena. And of course, every time it, uh, it flowered, we had a huge shower of rain and it fell over and dropped all its petals. So this, this gave peonies a bit of a bad name for a lot of people, but not for me. I just was still fascinated and it always flowered in my birthday. And um, so I used to run home from primary school in the afternoon to see if it had flowered, just to make sure it was going to flower in time for my birthday. But um, sometimes it didn't, sometimes it didn't. But when you're a child, those sort of things are quite important. Um, after that, I suppose uh, I just enjoyed them. And um, when I went to London and I came back home again from, from London, um, I went to gardens down in, in Dumfries and Galloway and uh, I saw other peonies growing there and I was fascinated by the, this and didn't realise, um, as you don't realise these things when you're a child, that there are lots of different cultivars and species and you think there's just one, the big double red one that falls over every year. Um, so that was the beginning of it all and then when I started Binny Plants, of course, I became very interested in lots of other things like grasses and euphorbias and um, umbrella firs and, uh, and peonies sort of crept in. Um, then it became an obsession, really, and that's the way it has become today. And it's actually taken over my life now, which is, which is good. I mean, I've, if you're content in life, you've got, you know, the things that you like around you and, you know, your friends your dog, your business, and um, and your peonies. And so the, the peonies have become really my life, and I just, nowadays, I've become completely obsessed by them. 